all the West Hartford Virtual Community Planning and Economic Development meeting, committee meeting to order. Uh, let's note for the record that all committee members are present, uh, Mr. Zidanowitz, Mr. Winograd, and myself. Uh, also from the town council is Mayor Cantor. Uh, with that said, we'll move right on to item 2A, the North Main Street Road Diet Trial Update. Mr. Ledwith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick Ledwith, Acting Town Manager. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as, as the chairman said, the primary topic on the agenda this morning is an update on a North Main Street Road Diet by our consultants, VHB. Uh, as this committee knows, we had engaged VHB to assist us with the North Main Street Diet and Safety Study back in 2020. As part of the study, the, the project included a road diet study that started last summer and continues through today. This involved changing the North Main Street corridor from approximately Brace Road through Bishop's Corner uh, and reducing, as we all know, that four lane road down to two lanes um, with the center turning lane. So Joe Balskis is here from VHB to provide the, the CPED committee with an update on how the study is going along with supporting observations and data. We will then discuss next steps, which will include another public information session on April 28th, where residents will have the opportunity to provide their feedback on the study. Uh, we would then like the opportunity to have BHB present at an upcoming uh, town council meeting. Uh, hopefully we could do that on May 24th, if the committee were in agreement. Uh, at this point, I'll, I'll pause uh, and see if Dwayne wants to add anything to my opening comments. Otherwise, we can turn to Joe and uh, start with the presentation. Dwayne. Thank you, Rick. Good morning, everyone. Dwayne Martin, Director of Community Development. I really don't have anything to add. Rick, you did a great job. So without further ado, I would hand it off to Joe if, if that's uh, agreeable. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, we have Joe Balskis from VHB. Uh, good morning, Mr. Voskis. It's all yours to start presenting. Good morning. Can you see it okay? It's in uh, pre presentation mode, I believe, right? We can see, sir. Uh, excellent. Uh, good morning. Again, Joe Voskis, VHB. As, as Rick and Dwayne said, we were retained by the town to do uh, the, the road die phase two, as you're calling it. Uh, I'm going to give a presentation uh, just summarizing what we've done so far, where we are, and uh, kind of a preview of what we're going to be presenting next week at the public information meeting. Let's see if this, this works. Let's see if it works. So the agenda, real quick, is just an update on the trial, some observations that we've made, some data collection we've been doing uh, ongoing since, uh, since August. I want to run through the evaluation measures that we've been considering and then talk about some of the next steps. So a quick update, some observations. We've been working with town staff. We've been having bi-weekly meetings with the, with the town staff or the consultant team reviewing the various issues that come up uh, from week to week. We've been reviewing operations uh, throughout the entire uh, trial from mid-August through, 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 uh, through this week. We review comments that have been coming in. We have comments coming in through telephone calls to the, to the project number, through emails, uh, and through inquiries. And we've been documenting all those comments and those concerns. We've actually addressed some of those concerns as they come up. We made some modifications to the road diet trial uh, in, in, in the very beginning with some striping changes we made. And as you do with the trial, you see some things that weren't on the certain plans. You make some changes and we've adapted to that. We've also made some observations of deliveries uh, and snow plowing. And that's something that we wanted to have done to go through a, a fall or winter as we've had. Uh, and obviously now we're in spring. So we've been doing that. Um, we've also are looking at mountain road and tropic drive. The study area includes the three quarters uh, of the project. So. There's the graphic attached to this is just a, a pamphlet that we put, that we assembled uh, to get some education out there for the two-way left turn lanes. As Rick mentioned, the center turn lane, it is a two-way left turn lane. So we put some information together from all the projects to kind of explain to the public um, some of the rules of the road, if you will, in terms of how to use the, uh, the twiddle, as we call it, two-way left turn lane. We've done some extensive data collection. Um, obviously, before uh, the road diet trial, we did some travel counts. And then during the trial, we did travel counts uh, back in November. Uh, we looked at the speeds, the volumes, we looked at the, uh, the queuing between the intersections. We have the cameras that we have now have online at four locations at the Brace Road intersection, Fern and Asylum Signals, as well as SIM. So we've got a lot of good uh, data to observe from in terms of cameras, and we, we I have that on my, my West Hartford laptop I have for, for watching the cameras and watching the operations and 
I, I enjoy doing that because I can see firsthand what's going on. We also have done a lot of field investigation, field observation, being out there, re reviewing the operation of the intersections, uh, looking at the turn of vehicles. We had some issue with potential buses and turns. Um, also the two-way turn line, how's it operating? And then also the traffic analysis with those counts and additional traffic analysis. And also we did a drone flight back in December, which, are, which is on the website and I can show you as well. So traffic counts, I mentioned we did, we did back in November uh, 2021. Seems uh, like a long time ago, but it was before the snow came in. And we want to look at the, the comparison of the volumes. Now, November is about three months into the road diet trial. Uh, it's a little early, but we want to get some data in before, before the snow fell. Um, so we did some comparisons to the pre-pandemic pre volumes for both North Main Street, Tropic Drive, and Mountain Road. And just to compare what we had projected in terms of volumes. And what we saw was that the, the, the diversion of traffic, we expect to see a a more significant diverting, diverting of traffic from North Main Street uh, didn't materialize. We, there is traffic being diverted, but not as much as we expected. Uh, we looked at the side streets as well, where the side streets being used for cut-throughs. We looked at the speeds and the queuing uh, between the intersections, and, and I'll go into a little more detail on that in the next slides. I mentioned the cameras as well. Uh, very useful tool at the beginning of the uh, road diet trial and the end of it, meaning the south end and the north end. Uh, at the signalized intersection, really powerful. It gives us a lot of a lot of tools to be able to observe uh, operations, um, and and we've been doing that. Uh, I wouldn't say every single day for a while. It was every single day during the morning peak hour, the midday and afternoon peak hour, um, and allowed us to really observe uh, some of the concerns that were raised about the two-way left turn lane, about violations happening there. We didn't see a lot of that. There has it has happened, but not a lot of violations. Um, but also allow us to see where we had some issues uh, potentially with delivery vehicles, like in this, this picture right here of, of the Brace Road camera, where uh, we've seen the landscape trailer going to the uh, block in the lane, going to the cemetery. Turned out to be not, not be a problem. Um, so the cameras allow us to do that. And then a few observations. Uh, you can see here, a couple of pictures here at the uh, asylum intersection. We had some concerns regarding trucks turning, uh, as well as buses. There were some concerns with the left turn lane now being in place southbound that the bus made difficulty making a turn and it is tight it is tight uh, but you can see here from the picture it actually does work i down to myself personally observing this and watching the buses make maneuver so this is what you do as part of the trial you look at other ways that you may need to tweak your design tweak your layout uh, in this case it, it's working uh, the bus it is a tighter turn for buses but the buses can make it so this is just a quick picture showing that and same thing with the um, with the toilet lift turn lane also, observations allow us to uh, observe the phasing of the signals, how the left turn phases work. We've been seeing some concerns or hearing concerns about, for, about Fern Street approach, left turns on North Main Street. Uh, some, some concerns about difficulty making a turn now um, with, the, with the change in the lanes. And we've observed that in the cameras. We've recorded video. Uh, so, we're, so we're aware of that and we're, we're, we are reviewing that as part of our recommendations. As I mentioned also, analysis with the counts. We've updated our capacity analysis. We have a traffic model for the entire corridor. This is a snapshot of it. It's not the, uh, the, the, the best looking graphic, but this is what we use for our model. And you can see there, in that, in that picture right there, there's a lot of queuing right there. It's on North Main Street, Fern Street. Uh, and this is some of the analysis that we've done. It actually mimics what we've been seeing in the field during some of the peak hours. And we made some changes uh, as a result of what we saw in the field we ha um, and what we observed. And what, what the analysis is telling us that we need to do make some changes to the analysis, and we did that. We actually made some modifications with the with the additional data, additional observations. We modified some of the timings of the signals to uh, minimize and reduce the queuing that was occurring uh, on on at the Fern Street intersection, and particularly southbound. Southbound queue was in the afternoon was backing up across the American School for Deaf driveway, and we seem to have addressed that uh, with with the analysis and with recent observations of the queues in the field. So one of the key aspects of the, of the trial is the evaluation measure. How we actually evaluate the road diet being a success or a failure in some measure. So we have about eight performance criteria that, we, that we're using. And they're listed here. And the, prior, the number one, obviously, is the crash. Safety is, is paramount for, for transportation projects. That's, that, that's our guiding principle. Uh, crash frequency and severity, operations of the roadway, number two, operation of the intersections that I just kind of talked about. Emergency services, what are they telling us in terms of, of the, uh, the access? And then public feedback. Um, and then finally, some of the more esoteric uh, observations of 
pedestrian bicycle usage, uh, neighbor traffic safety issues, and intersection and driveway accessibility. So those are things that we that we are using for performance criteria to help us identify the success uh, of of the road die trial and and how we can measure that. And a lot of it in here is basically data. Uh, you know, the crash frequency is data. Uh, you know, the operations is data using our traffic models. The emergency services, not data, but but information received by the providers. Public feedback is, is data. That's what we've been receiving uh, online as well as our comments. And the rest of them are more observations with some data that we've accumulated during the trial. So some of the results I want to go through. I'm not going to give, all, give it all away. We have a public information meeting next week. We have I have more detailed data uh, results I'll be presenting at the public information meeting next week. But, but in terms of crash frequency and severity, we are definitely seeing reduced crashes uh, in rates uh, all three quarters. Uh, and the fact that that's positive, naturally, it's a naturally positive effect. It, it was less than we expected to see. Uh, road diets uh, have a pretty good crash modification factor. So we didn't see as much as we thought we'd see. And, and the data is still coming in. We've, we've collected data through the, the month of, of March. We're now also uh, going to be including April. And we had a crash yesterday that we're still digging into uh, on, 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 the, uh, on, on North Main Street. But we uh, definitely seen a reduced crashes. We were thinking maybe more. Uh, and that may be that may be a result of of what we're also seeing in terms of traffic diversion. We're not seeing as much traffic volume diverting to the adjacent roadways. We projected more, and it's actually less than that. So that may be the result of that. Traffic operation roadway. We're seeing increased travel times. That that that's a given with road diet. Uh, you're going to have you have one one lane's direction now. Uh, we've seen reduced travel speeds for the peak hours. Um, and, and and overall, the the slowest car is a pace car when you have a single lane. So we've we've been seeing that. We've uh, also seen queues that I mentioned at Fern Street and Asylum. We've mitigated the queues, we think, with the revised timing. And it, you know, time will tell if it, if it pans out, but we think it's manageable. The, the increased travel times, we think, are a manageable uh, operation. Same thing with the congestion on the in intersection operation. We, have, we obviously have more, we increased congestion. So we're seeing more congestion, sorry about that, uh, occurring at the intersection, but it's manageable uh, with the revised timings. And we can continue tweaking the timings uh, to, to maximize the operations. So we think we've we've minimized the diversion of traffic, and we think the congested operations we've minimized them as well. So we think they're manageable. Uh, we're, we're you know we're not seeing uh, more than two cycles of delay at some of these intersections. Emergency services. So we've requested uh, input from emergency services. They've re replied to us with no life safety concerns uh, for the most part. So that's, that's a positive as well. Public feedback has been a positive result as well in terms of effects from I think that we've tallied uh, today. And so the public comments, we, we've detailed them um, from the public information meeting in the last year. Uh, the email, telephone comments, we've got them all summarized in this okay, database. Can I I'm back sorry. up for one second? Yeah. Okay. Is there a question? I'm sorry. I thought I heard there was a question. Uh, so we have it all documented, um, and that's from uh, August 13th of last year through present day in, in, in a spreadsheet database. And obviously the public survey they talked about, we have two surveys we conducted. This is interesting. We have about 500 uh, respondents in the spring of last year. And um, right now, when we closed the, we closed the survey uh, a couple months ago, we had almost 2,000, uh, which is indicative of the actual road day trial being in place. And that's all detailed on, on the town website. So the other measures in terms of evaluations, the, the pedestrian bicycle usage, we've observed uh, increased use of the sidewalks, pedestrians, and, and the bicycles on the court. We haven't really documented that, but we've noticed that. We've observed that there's increased use of that. Uh, we think we've cut, we've uh, we've reduced the cut through traffic concerns uh, through the neighborhoods. There were some issues with cut throughs between between uh, North Main Street and Trout Park. We think that's been addressed. And then the intersections and driveway accessibility. This is something that we've that we've known all along. Talk about that. The gaps in traffic flow during the peak hours, they are reduced. Where you had four lanes, you had more gaps, maybe higher speed, but you had more gaps. With the, with the road deck, you have a platoon effect. You have you know, signalized intersections of Sims, Asylum, and Fern, and down the brace, and, and vice versa. You're going to have, in the peak hour, those vehicles platooning, clumping together. So it, it's natural you're going to have some reduced gaps in traffic flow for driveways um, that are you know, along, along the corridor. But the off peak, you're going to have you're going to have safer gaps. You'll be able to, you'll be crossing two lanes instead of four lanes to get into your lane. So that is the expectation of an effect of of the road diet. We haven't had many complaints about that. There's been a couple, but we think it's it's a it's it's working in terms of the traffic uh, access to the driveways. 
We also flew a uh, drone and back in December, you can see it on the website. I can show if you want to see it. It's a, we have many drone videos. We have one five minute video that runs the entire quarter. Uh, it's impressive. It doesn't show a lot of the congestion that we've seen, but uh, we, I'll, I'll show you a picture of some of that, but it is a, it's a pretty good tool to see. Uh, it, it just goes along the entire quarter. So we think it's pretty useful for the general public to see. And these are some pictures of, from that same drone video. Uh, going from uh, from north to south. This is obviously Sims Road intersection. The beginning of the road diagram. It's very clear. You can see here that the pavement markings that were eradicated from the four lanes and the center lane, center line there, to the three lanes. So it's pretty it's pretty impressive when you look at how this is put in place and how it's how it's striped uh, from 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 the aerial view. This just runs down through the intersections. I'll go through these real quick. This is uh, the Salem intersection. And you can see some of the changes. You can see right there the left turn lane where it was before and where it is today. That's where we had some of the issues. With the buses turning here, we'd look at because the left turn lane is now this is now tighter. And there, there's a shoulder, so we we had to evaluate that, make sure it was designed uh, cor uh, correctly. And it, and it is. There's some more pictures down at Brookside. So this is the midpoint with the with the the new, the new bridge, uh, new bridge crossing that was put in place uh, last year. And you know, American School for Deaf Driveway. You can see there again the the two way left turn lane just extending through the intersection up to the Fern Street intersection. I'll just go through these real quick. And there's a cemetery. There's a driver right here. Turn left into the cemetery. Uh, so correct use, correct use of the two-way left turn lane. And this goes down to the beginning of it, that, the south end. You can see the markings there. And then, uh, so, here's, so here's a good picture. This is a picture um, that we that our drone um, took. And you can see here, you can see the extensive queues that were happening. This, again, this is December. This is Fern Street. This is looking north towards, uh, towards uh, Asylum. American School for Deaf Driveway, you can see that the uh, extensive queue, and that was happening. That we that was happening during the peak hour. It usually happened about 3 34 o'clock when someone pushed the button here. So if someone they pushed the exclusive pedestrian button here, it would obviously stop all traffic. Uh, and then it, it would just compound this queue. And that did, you know, that was that was going for a couple cycles. And I, I sat in that myself. Um, and it did extend past the American School for Deaf Driveway. You can see it's actually over here. And we did see occasionally a few cars got frustrated and just drove in the two-way center lane turn lane down here. We've seemed to have mitigated that, we believe. Uh, and we're still observing it, but with the, with the revised timings here, we're able to reduce that queue so it's not occurring uh, to the point where it was back in December. And just some more pictures of the two-way left turn lane and the markings. So I want to also highlight to you for that uh, Google Maps. If you use Google Maps Street View, has been updated uh, as, an, as an example. This is a picture from Google Maps 2020 November. This is a uh, asylum looking north. Uh, yeah, I think it's asylum. I'm sorry, Fern Street. Fern Street looking north. And you can see it's 2020, there's four lanes. And then 2022, it did it around here in January. So you can see the change. So very easy to see the change using an online Google Street, Street View. It's only from Fern Street to the north. Fern Street to the south is not part of the update for some reason. So what are the next steps? Uh, any comments that we may receive today and from others, uh, we'll want, want to address those. As, as Rick mentioned, we have a public information meeting next Thursday at the, at the auditorium. We're, we're going to compile all those comments, all the comments we receive as we've been doing, we'll compile them and we'll review them and address them as we can. And then issue a draft report for presentations to the town council. And that presentation town council will include recommendations. I didn't talk recommendations here. Uh, we are compiling recommendations uh, in terms of is this a, a, a success? Is it a failure? Is it a success if we do certain things? Uh, are there other things that should be considered, other improvements? Uh, one thing that does stand out, uh, I can say that Fern Street to the south, we have said from the very beginning that uh, North Main Street should be widened to 42 feet in width, so it's a uniform width. The shoulder today is only three feet wide. Uh, elsewhere, it's five feet wide. So that is a recommendation that we are carrying through. To, uh, through I can say that. But we'll have other recommendations in that in the presentation to town council uh, next month. So that's uh, that's uh, that's what I have for the presentation. And I'd be glad to take any any questions or go back to any slides you wish to go through. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Balskis, for your uh, for your presentation. Is there a way to eliminate the presentation from the screen? Yes, I can stop sharing. I think. Sharing. I know there are committee members. Okay, good. Uh, Mr. Winograd, I know you had a question. Then Mr. Zidanowitz. Uh, you're muted, Ben. Sorry. Thank you. My, can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. It was a, 
things would go off and on. Um, on I think the third screen, you, you had sort of summaries, um, positive or manageable, I think, were your categories. Um, and the second one referred to uh, speeds as being down, um, which seems to me to be a positive, if you, yeah, as opposed to you know, that, that I think we had talked about that at the beginning. That's not a negative thing. That was one of our goals. It's um, so speeds are down. That's great. Um, and probably should be listed as a positive. Obviously, queuing is a different issue. And you know, the, appreciate the information on that. Um, so, just if you could talk a little bit about uh, what is happening with the speeds, and then just related to that of any issues with the safety elements for those who are using um, those five foot lanes um, sort of safety wise, um, given the speeds. So in terms of speed, we've seen speeds um, reduction to about 10%, maybe a little more um, overall. Um, you know, so it's a, yeah, right. It is a good thing, but we also heard some comments from the public that people are driving faster. Uh, so, and, and you, you can see some of that in the data, but overall the speeds are reduced. Anytime you can reduce speed, it's a good thing. As you said, uh, it, it's safer for pedestrians, it's safer for bicyclists that may be using the, the, the bike lane. So the speed is definitely, definitely down. It, it definitely, I can say from my own observations, it's definitely a calmer roadway. Uh, and, and whether you're walking or, or if you're in a bike, I haven't ridden my bike on her yet uh, in, in the new lanes. I actually will probably plan on doing that, but. It definitely feels calmer uh, during the peak hour uh, in, ter in terms of speed. So the speed, yeah, as we know, speed kills uh, and slower speeds are good. We have been seeing speeds uh, in Connecticut through the roof. Uh, so um, and so this is you know being able to reduce speeds and having drivers who obey speeds uh, is a good thing. You, you can still have the speeder who's the first car in that, that queue, that platoon that can drive as fast as they want. You can still have that. Um, you know, because we didn't change the, you know, the roadway cross section in terms of the curving, you know, that's still there. But in general, I think we are seeing a good thing, uh, the speed reductions uh, uh, that, we, that we anticipate. We thought maybe a little more reduction speeds, but it's a good thing, as you said. Yes, it is positive. We're just saying manual because it, it, we're tying it together with, you know, the, 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 the road, roadway, the speeds, the queuing. So we think we can manage, uh, we can certainly manage and you can also manage speeds with enforcement if you really wanted to. You could do a little more than that. So, so that's that's why we're saying it's manageable. We'll look at and see if that's more positive than manageable. But we we can we can certainly look at that. That's a good good comment. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. Winogrand? Um, just one other. Um, originally, it, you know, when we first started, there was discussion about the width of the the twiddle, and whether it should be, yeah, you know, what do we have? Twelve feet or ten feet or eleven feet? Um, is your, does your study show any sort of conclusions on on that width in terms of like you know turns like turning width and and other safety factors whether or not that's the appropriate width of the of that lane? Yeah, I mean it's um, I would say what, what we heard from emergency services is they like it, um, and and they and I will tell you that they wanted a wider two way left turn lane. Um, so in terms of actual data, I can't point to any, any actual data that says that you know it, it's it's the, it's the it's the best width to have there. Um, I, I can tell you from observations, from driving it, and then hearing from emergency services, which I think is one of the more important ones for life safety standpoint. We we haven't heard any concerns with regards to response times. Uh, it seems like that that width is an optimal optimal width for them. So uh, I, I, I don't see that changing in recommendation at this point in time. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get some more data coming in and we have a lot of support for the width that we have. So uh, it, you know, in terms of in terms of that, certainly you could consider, you know, this we're, we're seven months into this. So a year, two years down the road, the town is going to be doing a repavement of the entire roadway, let's say, or maybe in five years. Uh, a consider a reconsideration of the width, uh, you know, maybe narrow a little bit is possible. I, I don't think you, as an engineer, I don't think you'd ever see 10 feet. I wouldn't recommend 10 feet. Maybe an 11 foot is possible, but I think that's 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 down the road. I think that I think the 12 foot is good because it's it's brand new to the town. Let it ride out. Let things get settled uh, over a period of time, and and the town themselves can evaluate that. And that may be a recommendation of ours. That may be that that town could reconsider the width. Now, is it helping saving six inches? It, you know, it could. 
It could, uh, but I think it's I think it's a I think it's a good width to have right now, uh, and I think that the, the, the data so far we're not seeing side side crashes. Uh, we see emergency services are supportive of it up here, so I, I think it's a good thing right now. Okay, thank you very much. Nothing else. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Balkis, also for your on that was an intended plans down the road. Uh, Mr. Zdanowitz. <laughs> Thank you. A um, couple questions, actually. If we go back to slide five, talk about pre-pandemic. Um, I live off of Mountain Road, um, north of Albany, and um, I, I, I'm just trying to find where the pre-pandemic numbers are that you spoke of on five. And if we have, if I'm missing them somewhere. So, um, pre pandemic, I didn't show pre pandemic numbers. Okay. So that's, that's, the, um, I, I didn't show, we have them. I didn't show them. We have it. Okay. That's fine. I, I, you mentioned it several times. So I, I was looking for it. That's, that's fine. I happen to live in an area where, because what, what's happening here, and you're talking about pre pandemic numbers versus numbers, just an anecdotal um a piece of information is that during uh pre-pandemic times the um met life in signa traffic would back up to a half a mile from route 44 all the way up mountain road so we are nowhere near pre-pandemic traffic because they're going to work twice a week right now and that main corridor even north main and mountain are the two corridors for them to exit and we haven't seen that back up on Mountain Road since the pre-pandemic, and that was significant. And traveling down Mountain Road at that time, trying to get cross country to cross town to Wolcott for sports was a 45 minute venture at best. And you would have to go North Main and South Main to be able to get there because you had, Mountain Road was so backed up. So the pre-pandemic numbers, I don't know what you have, but I know that they are nowhere near what they were just on an anecdotal. There is no traffic at 4.30, 4 o'clock on Mountain Road right now and North Main. I, I use it quite often. So I just, that's a, one piece of information I was- I, Let me address that real quick, if you don't mind. So, yeah. so our, our traffic uh, model numbers were pre-pandemic numbers. We use pre-pandemic numbers for our travel models for the road diet. So in order for us, our, our first part of our, our phase two here was that we back last year, we were doing analysis to show the town, can this work? Uh, is it feasible? So we did the travel models using pre-pandemic numbers for the travel models. We've adjusted a little bit for the queuing that we saw, but the base travel model used pre-pandemic volumes, number one. Number two, you talk about the peak hour on Mountain Road on North Main Street, it shifted. It is no longer 4.30, it's at 3.30. In fact, I was on the phone yesterday with a gentleman who lives on Mountain Road who called and was asking me about uh, was there something going on because uh, he's noticed the last last few weeks walking his dog over the reservoir he lives on mountain road that he has he has seen the peak hour 330 and 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 we've noticed that as well we've been out there 430 where's all traffic we came in earlier and what's happening is the work from home the school peak is now what we're seeing is the afternoon peak it used to be the community peak as you said uh now with only three days a week the peak hours in the peak hours in general are shift shifted. The morning peak hour is no longer there. There's a midday peak hour now, and then there's an earlier afternoon peak hour. So that that's what's happening. You you're right, absolutely right. It's it's changing. But I want to make sure it's clear here that we did use the initial pre-pandemic volumes to evaluate the you know viability of this uh, of this this uh, road day trial happening, and that's and that's what we're seeing. Yeah, I, I understand. It's just that. Um... What shows up on a graph and numbers and what shows up um, on the road as as actual because I, I could just tell you it it was a disaster and it's not so it was just we have to deal with it right so I just have not seen that even at 330 haven't seen the traffic yet and that's school traffic I'm just afraid of what happens when Cigna and MetLife go back to work five days a week and full time uh, and that's probably not for a, a, a good amount of time right now so I understand that um, and then you talked about um, uh, and I don't know the twiddle definition, but the left hand turn uh, from North Main uh, to uh, Fern, for example, it's maybe three cars long. Is that something that uh, is that is that the twiddle piece? Is that when you're talking about 
Because I'm, right. I'm talking about length of the left-hand turn where the dots actually let you allow, instead of only letting three cars in, if you could let more cars in. So, so we're looking at that. So there's a couple of things there. So at Fern Street, even Asylum, um, we've been asked to look at the Fern and Asylum Street approaches for left turn lanes and, left, and change left turn phasing. We've also been asked to, to consider, do we need to extend the left turn lanes um, on, on North Main Street? So yeah, we are, that, that'll be one of the recommendations that we may be recommending that um, the town consider extending some of these turn lanes. So, so yes, we are, we are evaluating that as part of our analysis uh, for, for the, the road dive report. Okay, and then you also mentioned people crossing four lanes of traffic um, and that not happening anymore. One is that's illegal and two, um, that that's at a very abrupt turn. So I'm wondering where that data came from, where where, where people are crossing four lanes. Well, when, when, you, when you leave a driveway in North Main Street before uh, before the road that you had to cross four lanes. You had to drive across two oncoming lanes, and you had to cross two oncoming. So if you're leaving driver to go north to go to Albany Avenue, you had to cross you know three lanes to enter the fourth lane. So you were crossing the entire North Main Street, and with the road dive, you're not crossing four lanes; you're only crossing two lanes. Well, if if you pull out of a driveway, you have to pull into the closest lane. You can't pull into the farthest lane. That's an illegal. Well, it it, it may be, but it, the reality is that people are doing it. You know, people are doing it. So it, it may that may be the case. But the point is that you have less lanes to cross for the road day. Okay. All right. And uh, as a matter of fact, some some people do use the twiddle, the two-way left turn lane, as you know, as a turn lane. They may pull out of the driveway into the twiddle. And then into their actual lane. So we we've seen that. Uh, that's not recommended, but it, that's 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 obviously what some people are doing. Um, and you know, in the reverse of pulling their driveway. So, but again, as I mentioned before, you have less lanes across uh, than you had before. All right. So the, the so the the data for pre-pandemic, you say, is very similar to right now, for the numbers. No, oh, I I no, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that. I said we use we use the pre-pandemic traffic volumes to determine the feasibility of implementing the road diet itself. What we've done now, we've done counts back in November, and we've seen that the, the, the volumes, did, uh, we, didn't, we were expecting a diversion, meaning that, oh, there's a road diet on North Main Street, I'm gonna avoid that and go to Tropic Drive and go to Mountain Road. And the diversion we were expecting did not materialize, is what we're saying. So, okay, so do you, the volumes do you have changed. They have changed, but they have not changed as, as, as much as we expected. So do you anticipate when traffic gets back to normal pre-pandemic that those changes would happen? So when it's apples to apples, you expect that to well, happen? What I can tell you is that if the volumes return to pre-pandemic levels, that based on our previous traffic models, the road diet it will, will continue to work if, if it is in place. So again, we use a pre-pandemic volume. So we use conservative volumes as compared to what's there today to determine the viability of the, of, of the road diet itself. If the full volumes return, then we we still think it'll work. There may be more diverted traffic in that case, but we 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 you know we've proven with the travel models that the road diet um, uh, can sustain you know the pre-pandemic levels. Personally, I don't think the volumes ever come back. Uh, I, I don't think anyone can predict that right now. But but yes, uh, the 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 if the question is, will the road diet trial uh, work when everyone is back to work full time? And our, the answer is yes. That that's what we use for pre-pandemic volumes. If the volumes do change and there's more intensive peak hours than were the pre-pandemic, that could be an issue. That could that that you know maybe the afternoon peak hour is greater in the in the post-pandemic world. We haven't modeled that. We we and we can't because we can't predict what's going to happen post-pandemic. But I can tell you that we have modeled pre-pandemic volumes and we showed in our previous traffic studies cover models that it does work and and it's working today, obviously as you've seen with with uh, with the volumes we have today. Okay, so I would just ask that. You know, with the changes that you made from the original engineering um, that you used to model this with, and those changes that you made to adjust it, that we continue to look at that when those numbers do come back. Absolutely, yeah. The town has a pretty sophisticated signal system, uh, and a great, great team at Public Works and Engineering, uh, and they're on top of that. So they, they can monitor the, the operations, and, and that's just what happened. We 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 noticed there was queuing happening out in Fern Street. We observed it. We heard about it. And we got it, and the team got on it. We looked at it. We 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 looked at recalibrating the timings, and we did that. And we think we've we've mitigated, you know, that long queue I showed you. Uh, it's not happened as much uh, as frequently as it has in the past. Thank thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Janowitz. Are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Ledwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick Ledwood, Acting Town Manager. I just wanted to uh, introduce the special guests that we have here this morning. We have the Chairman of the uh, the Bicycle and Pedest or Pedestrian and Bicycle Commission, Ed Pollock. And, and not to put you on the spot, Ed, but I don't know if you had any comments on uh, what you've heard today. Uh, yes, thank, sure. you, thank, thank you. Very, thank you very much, Rick. And thank you very much uh, uh, to the subcommittee for uh, inviting me to to attend and present on behalf of the uh, Ped and Bike Commission. Uh, just by way of introduction, um, the uh, I was recently appointed to the uh, commission, and in the first meeting, I was uh, elected by the commission to be its chair. Uh, but I've been attending their meetings for well over a decade now, so I'm very very familiar with the folks and its its operations. Uh, but I'm also a, a small business owner in town. I've owned Connecticut Ecosystems uh, with my office here in West Hartford since way back to 1995. So a long time resident of the town. Um, and I wanted to emphasize that I am speaking on behalf of the Ped and Bike Commission. We talked about this at our last meeting. They uh, authorized me to, if, if, I, if possible, to speak uh, to the, the subcommittee. So, uh, you know, I'm speaking on their behalf on regards to the road trial. You know, the road diet uh, has been on the on the radar of the Penn Bike Commission for many, many years. It goes way back to when Beth By was still a, a state senator and she secured the funding for the feasibility study for a road diet. So this goes back a, a long time. We've, we've we've been interested in this and uh, the commissioners um, since the road diet has been trial has been in place. They've they've driven the road diet. They've walked the road diet corridor and they've bicycled on the road diet corridor to to come to their impressions and the general impression and i and i, I think mr Balskis used the, the same term i'm going to use is that that travel corridor it's just a much calmer environment than it was before it just feels calmer whether you're in a car walking on the on the sidewalks or if you're in one of those uh, shoulder lanes and of course, this is a traffic calming measure, so that makes sense that that would be the impression. If you think back to what was there before, four lanes, two lanes north, two lanes south, with uh, the the outside lanes extending right up to the curb, just you know a couple of feet away from pedestrians, it felt like I would call it the, the wild west out there. Uh, there was reckless speeding, far in excess of the uh, posted speed limits. There were numerous swerving learn, uh, uh, lane changes as uh, uh, drivers in the left lane attempted to make a left turn and traffic backed up behind them. Motorists then darted into the right lane in order to get around um, that, that blocked traffic. So you had those rapid lane changes speeding. Um, and uh, at, for folks making those left turns, as Mr. Balska said, they had to cross two lanes of oncoming traffic, some of which was obscured by the, the closest lane to them. Um, and it was at the intersections that most of the crashes were occurring, which would be expected. Um, and the result of, of that very unsafe, of those very unsafe conditions is that as the uh, feasibility study documented, uh, for many years, there was an epidemic of motor vehicle crashes on that corridor. Um, that corridor was unsafe for motorists. It was unsafe for pedestrians who were separated from that speeding traffic by just a few feet. There was no opportunity for bicyclists to use that corridor. And, and really importantly, um, it was just a very unpleasant environment for residents in that area. And what I loved about those drone, drone photos that Joe showed and it, you saw it in many of those pictures, it really emphasized that this Main Street corridor, it is a residential corridor. You saw house after house after house on it. This is not I-84. This is a major travel corridor, but it's going right through a very resi residential area. And those residents, you know, their quality of life was impacted by those very unsafe conditions in that, in that corridor. As we see it, the road die trial has been a win, 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 win. Five wins, so let me explain. 
The first is that for residents and for students, you know, of the a major school, the American School for the Deaf, it's certainly that quality of life has improved just because it feels calmer out there. Um, for pedestrians who are now separated from the, that that closest traffic by as much as five feet and traffic which is which is traveling slower as well it just it, it feels safer because of that wider separation for bicyclists um they, they are now they're not marked as such but they are curb lanes um which almost connect not entirely they almost connect west hartford center and uh bishop's corner we hope ultimately uh, that that uh, connection will be made. We think it's very important for bicycle connectivity, but that may be something, no pun intended, down the road to make that ultimate connection. But at least now you have dedicated lanes for cyclists. I've cycled it. I feel safe out there uh, on those, those lanes. It certainly is a win for motorists. Um, there's no more swerving of, of cars around those cars backed up at those left turning lanes. Um, and, you know, I've been in that, that twiddle, that uh, two-way left turning lane. I've been there in my car and it just feels safer. I know what it felt like before when cars were backing up behind me as I was trying to turn on Fern, make the left turn on Fern or Asylum and watching cars back up. I feel safe in that twiddle as I know there's going to be a gap and I'll eventually be able to make that turn. And finally, the last win is for the town of West Hartford. You know, we had a major transportation corridor which was plagued by, by chronic motor vehicle crashes. And that's simply not sustainable. And it impairs the quality of life in town. And the, the road diet, we believe, uh, is a traffic calming solution to this, this crash epidemic. And, you know, as Joe mentioned, there's been overwhelming community support for it as shown by the surveys. Uh, the traffic diversion that was predicted by some has not emerged. And as Joe mentioned, the, the vehicle crash rate has declined. Very, very happy to, to, to see that. And, you know, if not the road diet, we would ask the question, well, then what? What is a plan B? Going back to what was there before, that certainly was not a, a desirable condition for any, any user or any resident out there. And if there was a plan, if there were a plan B, you know, that would have been implemented years ago, but it never was. This is, this is a feasible solution. And, um, we, the Pedestrian Bicycle Commission fully supports uh, the road diet, and we urge the town council to, to endorse it when the time comes. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your comments on behalf of uh, the commission. Is there anything further that anybody would like to uh, comment or ask a question with respect to this topic? Sorry, I'm not on camera. I actually uh, have to uh, be in my car for, um, but uh, I, I just wanted to first I want to this is Mayor Sherry Cantor. Thank you, uh, Chair Davidoff. I I thanks Ed for your feedback. Um, and you I think summarized it very well. This has been such a long, long term uh, project. And I'm I'm really, really so pleased that we're at this point and seeing the actual feedback that we really did predict uh, this this would be. Um, and I I think the diversion, the lack of diversion is because people feel so much safer on that road. To be honest, I diverted more, uh, and I know my, some of my, many of my um, constituents that reached out to me said that they would go on Trout Brook Drive because they felt it was safer than being on North Main Street. Uh, and so that travel, that that uh, calmness, and the uh, the lack of speeds and the and the congest, you know, sort of that really tight feeling that you had on being in two lanes uh, in each direction isn't there. And so I, I, I actually think that that's the safety component is actually preventing that diversion. So um, I would just note that in addition to the comments that were shared. But, um, you know, I really thank everybody for their their patience on this. And um, and I think we're at our I'm so I just I'm really pleased that we're at the point we are now. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Mayor Cantor. Drive safely. Uh, Seeing no further comments, let's move on to item 4A, which would be the Community Development Department update. Uh, Mr. Ledwith. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Rick Ledwith, Acting Town Manager. Um, our commitment to the committee was to, to be wrapped up uh, by nine o'clock this morning. So, uh, Dwayne, I'll, I'll turn it over to you for a very brief uh, summary and update of your uh, monthly report. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Gwen. Again, Dwayne Martin, Director of Community Development. I just want to point out that I have Tim McClochie, Ch Chief Building Official, and Greg Summer, Town Engineer, if you have any detailed questions after I run through uh, some of this report. Um, I'll skip the uh, the building division chart. We can go back to that with Tim if you'd like. I just wanted to highlight some of the engineering division projects that are ongoing. Um, the first one is the expanded outdoor dining. This is not an engineering project. It's shared with others in community development, fire, public works, et cetera. But we are planning on redeploying the uh, barriers again, trying to get them out the week of May 3rd. There is a gas main project on Farmington Ave. We've received confirmation that they are doing well and doing what they can to complete the first stage of this project to allow us to get those barriers out the week of May 3rd, trying to get those out before Mother's Day. We don't want to upset the mothers. Uh, so we are on target for that. I've been working with a lot of the restaurants with regards to the seating and uh, the usage of the expanded after dining in the sidewalk and the road parking areas. Uh, Trapper Trail Phase 5, quick update on that. If, if you haven't been out there, that project is uh, resumed after winter shutdown. So we are nearing a completion. This is the section of the Tropper Trail from Farmington Ave to Firm Street. So that is going uh, really well. And then phase six, we heard from the state that they are in the final review for Tropper Trail phase six. This is the section from Firm Street to Duffield Drive. So an extension of that. Uh, we're hoping to get a commitment to fund. This was a grant project. Uh, to be able to start that uh, construction in uh, late spring, early summer, we would still need to go out to bid to get a contractor, but we're getting close on that. You'll be hearing more about that. Uh, there's also tree removal activity that's going on around that section of the Trapper Trail or Trapper Drive between uh, Asylum Avenue and Fern Street. The uh, work that's ongoing right now is to remove dead and dying trees or trees that were permitted through wetland. Uh, permit for the Trapper Trail, and then that will continue for dead and dying trees between uh, the watercourse and Trapper Drive. There are many trees, unfortunately, that are posing a public safety hazard. Uh, so this was the opportunity to have a contractor go out that out there to remove those trees, and uh, we figured since they're doing that, we might as well remove the permitted trees that were in the way of Trapper Trail Phase Six. So that's ongoing. A couple more projects to mention. Uh, Fern Street Bridge. So Fern Street Bridge near Fern Ridge Park is planned for replacement. We're in final design, hoping to be in construction later on this year. But you'll see some activity out there soon because there was a weight restriction recalculation. So the weight limit was further reduced because the bridge is deteriorating, uh, which is why we're obviously going to be replacing it, um, but not soon enough. So we are modifying the uh, travel way across the bridge to ship traffic to the north side of that bridge to get it away from the weakest beam in that bridge uh, to avoid a catastrophe. So a contractor is going to physically widen Fern Street. They're going to remove the area between the curb and the sidewalk on the north side of that bridge, which gains about four feet. And then we'll keep one lane of traffic in each direction, but push them to the north. Uh, so you'll see that with some barriers in the very near future, and that will stay up until we start the bridge replacement project later on this year, as I mentioned. And then lastly, uh, before we turn it over to Tim for the building division, is uh, we we're back in the construction season with the engineering division. So we are making preparations for road reconstructions and street resurfacing. So there's a list in the report with uh, those streets. Uh, the reconstructions are listed in chronological order. So Nesbitt is gonna be the one that started first. I believe we're targeting next week to start that construction work there. Uh, reconstruction projects typically take a month to three months, depending on their length and complexity. Whereas the rounds of paving, for which we typically have three, first one in May, usually take upwards of a month to complete soup to nuts. And then, uh, unless you have questions, I'll turn it over to Tim just to talk about the building division activities. Are there any questions of Mr. Mark? Uh, seeing none, uh, we can proceed. Thank you, Tim, if you would, wouldn't mind. Thank you, Dwayne. Tim McClochi, uh, Chief Building Official, uh, Supervisor of Inspections. Um, construction season's picking up for us also. 
Uh, we are still working on uh, implementing City View to go online. We had a couple minor setbacks. Uh, the project manager assigned to us uh, has recently completed her contract with City View. So we're working on another project manager to try and update them and get them up to speed to where we are, um, which we're doing. Uh, Dan Savelli switched positions from IT to be the fire department IT person. Um, although he's still being very helpful with us, his new commitment is, uh, is, is, is hindering a little bit of the project, but Dan's been great with that. Um, so the city view is moving forward. Uh, our activities, the permits entered uh, is up to about 590, almost 600 permits. So that's up the last couple months, which is typical as we, we start the construction season. Uh, our inspections are, are bumped up to a little over a thousand, which again is, is typical. And our plan reviews is, is, are, are the biggest numbers. We're up to about 1200 plan reviews for last month, which, um, which is a good sign and, and it's a good thing. It, it shows that the, the staffing that we brought on, Rob Tavella, our part-time inspector, who's working 24 hours a week, uh, is making a difference. So with that being, being the case, we're, we're, we're actually uh, speeding up on entering the permits and doing the plan reviews, which uh, is generating more inspections. So it's all, it's all coming together. Um, some of the bigger projects are noticing uh, supply chain issues. So they're kind of slowing down a little on their own, um, but we're trying to keep those going and um, things are things are going pretty good. Uh, hopefully we will we'll have City View online, you know, in July. Uh, we're we're going to start bringing some contractors in to get feedback in June when we before we go live, just to make sure that we're uh, we're as, as as customer friendly and contractor friendly as possible to keep the confusion down when we go online because there's a, there is going to be a learning curve. But uh, if we can get some contractor input on that, that'd be very helpful, and uh, we'll we'll see what we can do to change it to make it better before we go online. So um, things are things are looking good, and uh, with uh, construction's going. So if you have any questions, uh, thank you for that update. Are there any questions from the committee? Uh, seeing none. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate the report, uh, Mr. Martin. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on Tim's City View comment. Uh, we will be out in front of this launch. This is going to be a change in operation for not only the building division, but the engineering and planning and zoning divisions who will all have the ability to use the city view through this upgrade. It's going to create a little bit of pain, anxiety, um, but we will get through it in the, in the long run. It's going to be successful. I'm looking forward to it. It'll definitely help with efficiency in the office. Uh, but we want to be out in front of that. So approximately a month before we launch, which is, as Tim mentioned, the beginning of July, we will be promoting this to make people aware so that we don't have any more issues than uh, we need. So thank you. That concludes my report. Uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Uh, are there any um, future agenda items that uh, members would like to see addressed? Mr. Ledwith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Rick Led with Acting Town Manager. I just wanted to, to give a brief update on our transit oriented development ordinance, a very important piece of legislation um, that we had hoped to have before CPED prior to this meeting. Um, there's been a slight delay in, uh, due to some illnesses in our planning department, uh, but I did see a rough draft of it yesterday. We're going to add two more sections to this uh, piece of legislation. We'll have it in front of Corporation Council by Friday uh, of this week, and then we would like to have that on our next uh, committee agenda. Ideally, we would like to have it on the agenda as well for the May 12th uh, or May 10th Town Council meeting, uh, where we'll, we'd be able to refer to TP and Z and set for a public hearing on June 14th. So that would be the timeline we would like to uh, to keep with right now. Be happy to answer any questions that the, the committee had. No. Uh, any questions? Uh, hearing none. Okay. Uh, that concludes the agenda. Do I have a, a motion to adjourn? Mr. Zidanowitz. So moved. Uh, second, second, Mr. Winograd, thank you everyone for being here. Have a wonderful uh, Wednesday. Thank you.